All right, so we have about 50 folks logged in who I'm sure are enjoying this conversation immensely. <laughs> <laughs> and um, why don't we give this a try? Uh, hi to everybody out there. Um, Bob Burdensky here sitting in Chicago, Illinois, where it's a, a balmy 65 degrees today, but still nothing like Southern California where I wish I was uh, at the moment. Um, but welcome to the 14th uh, by, by hook or by crook, uh, Meeting of the Minds conference. Um, down at, at the, the bottom square uh, is my old friend, uh, John Taylor, uh, the Dr. Fauci of Advancement Services. Uh, John, welcome uh, to you. We, I can't believe we were pulling this off. We're, we are pulling it off, thanks to you, thanks to technology, and greetings from Durham, North Carolina, where it's a balmy... 54 degrees. <laughs> Chicago wins for once. I Who know. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks to everybody for uh, your willingness to give this a try, your, your uh, patience, maybe your need of therapy a little bit. And maybe we got you away from the spouse and the kids for a little while. You're welcome uh, for that. But, um, but happy to have you uh, joining us. I hope uh, uh, you are able to take advantage of all the sessions that we've carried over from uh, the auditorium at the Kellogg Center uh, into this uh, venue. Um, let me say a couple of things just off the top of my head, and then we'll introduce Dan and, and give you the funny backstory uh, behind his joining us. Um, obviously, the, the big elephant in the room for the next couple of days is the virus. I, you know, there are some sessions uh, on the schedule that probably look a little um, quaint in light of everything that we're facing. At one point, I was chuckling that you could rename every single session and add the phrase and the coronavirus to the discussion topic. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions in every session about, you know, are you still planning on all these things going forward, given, you know, what we're in the middle of. So we want you to know that we know that you know that we know uh, that we get all that. If anything, maybe we just thought you'd enjoy a little bit of a break from uh, all that in your face. Um, by the same token, I I can't be too serious doing this. I have to tell my jokes and I want to have fun and uh, I want to tease John and uh, and I don't want to quit doing that. So if anything at all comes off as being uh, you know, not uh, appreciative of the circumstances that we all find ourselves in. I kind of feel like part of what we're trying to offer for the next couple of days is a little bit of a hug and a little bit of therapy and a little bit of a smile. And so um, apologies in advance if we say anything uh, that just sort of seems a little inappropriate. We're just trying to process all this uh, along with the rest of you. Um, if I haven't confused you enough with the session grid, we we figured out first thing this morning that to run sessions concurrently, we had, it, we had to schedule the webinars in a different way than we initially had done it. So um, it, in case you didn't get my email around mid morning this morning that had the latest greatest schedule of meeting IDs, be sure you get your hands on that. And if, uh, if you try to get in somewhere and you can't for whatever reason, shoot uh, one of us a message and we'll uh, try and help you out. Well, um, and if they didn't, if they didn't get your email, they can get the new schedule with the codes on the website too. There you go. And I've just verified those are still uh, all correct. Um, let me introduce our uh, our host, <laughs> uh, Dan Montplazier, who's the vice president of advancement for Cal Poly Pomona. Um, Dan, you wouldn't know all this. Um, this is the 14th year of the Meeting of the Minds Conference. And you are the first Vice President of, of Advancement at Cal Poly Mo Pomona to come and welcome us. I think there were some years we deliberately hoped that, that the Advancement Office wouldn't notice that we were meeting over at Kellogg. Um, and you'll have to excuse the deep sense of irony I have that the first time we get the Vice President of Cal Poly Pomona to welcome us, we're not there. <laughs> so, so I was, I'm sorry that we can't be here to give you a, a proper round of applause, but um, it's very nice of you to, uh, to continue on in this format. And I hope we get a chance to uh, 
they get you back under more proper uh, in-person conference uh, circumstances next year. But thank you for being here and uh, give us a welcome. All right, <laughs> give us absolutely. Some <laughs> well, thank you, Bob and uh, John. And we've got a great team member, uh, Natalie Graff, uh, who does an amazing job for us in advancement services. And so she has provided the, uh, the background and I think I did uh, a panel <laughs> one other time, but we're, we're pleased to be the uh, former physical host for your virtual <laughs> conference. And uh, really congratulations to everyone who stepped up and uh, was able to sort of make this happen. Um, you know, we are like everyone else uh, working through this process as a team. California has uh, done uh, virtual and remote work. Uh, all of our classes uh, and all of our staff work. We have a small dedicated team that continues to come in and clean things. And we have some student labs. Uh, not all of our students had capabilities uh, to do that. And I had somebody tell me, boy, you know, the governor in California for about 12 years has been pushing the universities to figure out how to go more digital and online. And uh, we've always said it couldn't be done. So someone's gonna have uh, hell to pay uh, when this process moves along. So we'll see where it goes. Yeah. Uh, I put together just a to couple, couple slides uh, just to give it for those that are not in California a little quick uh, context. So we're uh, pleased to have three large public uh, university systems in California, the UCs, the Cal States, and 114 community colleges. And about half of our students come from our community college system. So um, it is uh, nearly a million students in California that are taking advantage uh, of the state system. Within the Cal States, uh, they're trying to be in everybody's backyard as much as we can. So 23 <laughs> campuses, and then we're down in a cluster. We're one of five in LA County uh, in Pomona. And then uh, of course, you know, these are all the wonderful things you can do in California, oh. but you <laughs> can't do them right now. And so if you uh, come out at another time, we always like to uh, promote how close we are and, and the variety of things. Uh, alums that work at all of these, and many of them struggling right now to figure out where uh, things are gonna be going. Just briefly, the campus, um, 26,000 plus students. Um, Cal State's uh, offer a few doctorates, but not many. So we have master's programs, but Cal State's focus on teaching and teaching quality. Uh, and so our, our people are really mission driven to support our students. Eight colleges, we're a polytechnic, uh, one of only two in California, Cal, uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo is where we uh, came out of as a regional campus many years ago, but we've now been around 80 years. Uh, we talk about learn by doing, and we have uh, Billy Bronco as our mascot, and we're really blessed with uh, 1,700 acres. So here we are in LA County, where we have 1,700 acres, and half of that is dedicated to agriculture, um, and our land was donated from the Kellogg family, uh, Mr. Kellogg. So this is the visual of where we would be, and uh, this is a <laughs> typical day on campus. We just added this uh, new spaceship looking administration building. And then I thought it was important to let the folks know right up there in the left corner, uh, up on the hill is our uh, Kellogg West uh, Conference Center. And that's where we would all be sitting, uh, enjoying our afternoon in the sun of California if we were together. So cool. Um, these are the faces, of course, of, of why we do what we do, uh, why we uh, are focused that way at Cal Poly Pomona. We've got about 75% of our students are Pell eligible, so sort of lower income students, and 57% uh, are first gen. So it's a campus that has a lot of graduates that work on the campus. Uh, we're very much focused on student success. California has had some big initiatives so that we can help people get out quicker, so they can get out in four years, keep the debt down, uh, and we really have an incredible staff uh, that does that. Um, as I think about where we are with the virus and, and just to the group that we're working with, I have sort of two ideas I just wanted to share briefly. Um, really, your differences are your strength. And so, as I, I said, all of a sudden now we're all distance learners of some kind. Many of our campuses were not prepared at all for this, didn't have the software for it. Others were much more advanced. Uh, for us, we've spent the last uh, three years building out our pilot, uh, polytechnic identity. So defining what that is, building our brand around embracing being a polytechnic. Uh, our entire campus buys in the idea that it's an applied learning. It's a balance of classroom labs and active collaborations. So as we go through this post-virus situation, I think universities uh, are gonna have to continue to differentiate themselves. So for us, it will be a challenge because for us, it's always been about the lab. We have more labs per square foot than most of the campuses in California. So we'll be talking about how we reshape some of that. 
but a few things um, to think about your differences. So for us, one of those is that our campus for 71 years has been producing a rose flow. So we work with San Luis Obispo, hundreds of students work year round. And for 71 years, we've been producing a float that, rose, uh, that goes down Colorado Boulevard on January 1st. Um, it's an amazing program. We just are, uh, raised $4 million for a new lab for them to work in because uh, the other one was outdated and, and didn't have walls on it. So we've uh, upgraded that. So that's a real, that's our, our football game. That's our football team. We don't have football, but the Rose Float is something that everybody can uh, circle the wagons and be excited about. We have these horses that were a part of our original land from Mr. Kellogg. So we have about 90 Arabian horses and we have the oldest breeding program in the United States for Arabians. And so we have a Sunday show. People can come and see the horses perform with our students. We have students that live on site to take care of the horses. And so that's a, a real interesting part of our campus. Uh, we have one of the largest hospitality programs uh, in the U.S. and includes we have our own restaurant on campus and you can take a wine tasting class as a part of your uh, degree as well. And so while people often know us as a technical school for engineering, which is one of the top programs in the West Coast, it's really hospitality uh, and agriculture that stand out. Uh, we're the only one of the few uh, four year bachelors of science in Southern California. We have our own farm store right now. It's open. It's selling veggies and, uh, and fruits. And so look at your own campus. I'm sure you do this anyways, but think about what's unique and special uh, about what you do. So that's the first thing. Embrace your differences. And then obviously it's a time of change. And so uh, when I thought about that, it's time to dust off your old copy of Who Moved the Cheese? And so all of those points are still really good ones for us. Um, and then, of course, the, the four characters within that, uh, Hem, Haw, Sniff, and Scurry. And so who on your team, who are you uh, in this crazy situation? And then who on your team uh, is responding in different ways? And so for us, it's uh, real simple. The plan for the next period of time is to stabilize, adapt, and innovate. And so are those, I, to me, you know, that idea is something that gives people some calm that, hey, that's the plan. We're going to take care of each other. Uh, we're going to continue to adapt. Right now, we're busy creating a lot of uh, remote work projects for our students. So we closed up our calling center. And so we're figuring out how can they help drive our giving day? How can they call alums and do interviews with them and build out our stories about, you know, these are, we are CPP uh, alumni. And then how do we keep innovating? So if each of the departments within advancement uh, think about this as the framework for what we're doing, uh, that's going to help us uh, get through this. So those are my, uh, my brief comments. I'm thrilled that you guys are, are together uh, with our group. I've got a couple colleagues that are on the agenda as well. Uh, we'd love to host uh, the event on campus uh, next year again. Uh, there's, there's open room for bookings and uh, you know, we'll be here to support you wherever we can. Dan, we're already booked. Uh, April 15th to the 17th, I think, or 17th to the 19th. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll double confirm. check and make sure you're not. <laughs> so, so, Dan, I did want to ask, uh, related, because this is a topic that comes up uh, often, and it's rare that I get a chance to actually ask it of a, a vice president. How far down are you planning? Say that, say that again. How, how far out are you planning, both – as far as the campus is concerned, but uh, in, in fundraising activities? Are you week to week, month to month? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, you know, we a number of items. I was with our events team. Uh, we did uh, postpone commencement, but we're not gonna cancel it. We're gonna postpone it. Uh, we're gonna look at some uh, future dates later in the year. You know, I told them right now, let's meet again on the 15th of April and we'll see whether we can open up calendar dates and look at some of those things. So it's really unit by unit. Um, we did just make the switch five days ago to having everybody go remote. Uh, we've all learned, uh, we've just been standing up the Microsoft Teams product, so everybody's been getting tutorials on that. Uh, you know, our Advanced Services group, they're ahead of the curve uh, for many of us, and our DOs are uh, making phone calls and talking to lots of people, and then I'm a point of contact with our board of directors. So uh, we really see, uh, at this point, the university is saying we'll stay uh, digital and remote for the summer school. Um, and then we're all waiting for the nod to be able to say that the fall semester will come back and look uh, something more normal or some kind of hybrid uh, for that. So for our purposes, 
Um, we're having a, a good year of cash in the door so far. We've got a couple of donors who are making some commitments. Uh, obviously, the stock market is a little bit crazy for everybody. Uh, so for us, it's all about just keep talking to people, keep sharing the university message. Uh, I did a video the other day for all of our alumni, uh, you know, a little two minute video on my phone. And then we shipped it out to uh, 90,000 emails that we had. So uh, we'll keep doing that and we'll try to be out in front of people about every seven days. Well, um, Dan, again, it, it will make me chuckle forever that the, the one year we had to come up with an online plan B, I, we, we got a, a very lovely welcome from uh, Cal Poly Pomona Advancement. We are grateful for your team's involvement every year. Come back and uh, welcome us uh, properly next year. Um, although I don't know you could have done any better than you did this year. So thank you very much. <laughs> That would be great. I, I've already shared this event uh, with my president and how proud I was that we were continuing. And that's what she wanted to hear, right? That not everything was coming to a standstill. So you guys are, uh, have been a great example. Well, um, we just have quick feet mostly, but um, it, it really came down to thinking that either we were going to be the last of the old paradigm of conferencing or we were going to be the first of the new paradigm. And we said, well, why don't we give it a try? And here we are. That's great. So far, so good. But thank you very much. Thanks, you guys. Good luck. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> we'll take all the luck we can get. That's um, right. <laughs> um, Dan, I think I need to take myself back as host. Let's see if I can figure out how to do that. Oh, come on, Bob. Want me to teach you? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I quit sharing, so now I think our videos are up. Oh, reclaim host. I'll be darned. I am the host now. Ha, ha, ha. And now you will see my slides. <laughs> um, actually, as I know, Dan has to uh, duck out. And one of the things we wanted to do is uh, show you all this welcome video. Is, John, is my video on yet? Not yet. Now, I've tested this, and uh, it seems to work. Um, okay, I think I told it to share. There should be uh, a lovely picture of Amy McCoy. Is she on? Not yet. <laughs> okay, let's see. Here's you just need screen. to share your, your share oh, Okay. Your right. Um, why that would be at the bottom of your screen. Share. There, hey, uh, there, there we go. Okay, so those are the slides, um, but I don't see, oh, here's Amy. There, you got Amy now? Not yet. Doggone it. Maybe they won't let me share her because she's a video, which would be a shame because I'm proud of this video. Okay. But rather than everybody have to suffer uh, two boomers trying to sort all this out, let me, let's just run through all the content we have, and then I'll give this a try uh, when we get uh, closer to the end. Um, so uh, welcome again, everybody. Uh, we had our session with Dan. Fun of him to show up and uh, um, I hope that's a tradition going forward. Seems appropriate. Yes, sir. Yeah, glad the president is uh, is proud of him too. <laughs> <laughs> maybe um, maybe the president will will let him do it again next year. Yeah. So if you've been a, a veteran of this conference uh, over the years, you know there's a couple of themes that John always uh, John and I always have running uh, through uh, the opening. Uh, one is our perpetual obsession with In and Out Burger and how we need to stop there uh, right after our planes land at LAX uh, every year. But, well, not this year. No. Uh, John, in case you were wondering, uh, in and out uh, is not offering delivery uh, yet. But if they start, I think that may be our best shot in Chicago and North Carolina. To I ever think get so. in and out delivery. Um, but uh, I'm going to be denied, it would appear, this year from my annual uh, in and out splurge. Um, the other thing John and I always... Uh, make a stop at while we're out there is the Coachella Festival. Uh, that has gotten postponed now with most everything else. Um, John, I, you, you could have won a lot of money making a wager that uh, the, the meeting of the minds would still be going while Coachella was not. <laughs> You're right. We could have. Hey, does, does, does this mean that we need to do another meeting of the minds in October? Yes, and keep okay. your keep your wristband because it's still uh, well. Valid. I still have my my plane tickets, so <laughs> um, there is a, a case in the lobby of Kellogg West with two hundred and forty pairs of these attractive uh, tortoise shell tortoise tortoise shell sunglasses. Tortoise. 
which was going to be the big giveaway this year and now will be next year. And what we wanted to do was pass out all these sunglasses at the opening session and take a picture of the whole auditorium with John and I looking like Jake and Elwood in the front of the room. So hold that thought. We're not doing anything with the sunglasses. I'm not even sure if they're going to leave the Kellogg West Conference Center between now and next year. But with the best of intentions, we had this all uh, laid out to have a great fun um, uh, opening. And in lieu of that, if you're still suffering this conference uh, at five o'clock Pacific time tonight, we invite you to join us. We've set up a special Facebook meeting uh, just to create one of these Uber uh, ultra Brady Bunch uh, photos. Uh, if you have sunglasses handy, feel free to bring those out and, and uh, put them on and give us some consolation that this is the best we could do uh, under circumstances, everybody wearing sunglasses. But, um, you know, if you're like me, I, I get jealous looking on LinkedIn and Facebook these days, these days, seeing everybody having their meetings from home with their team. Uh, so this is the, John and I making a run at doing uh, the same uh, kind of virtual meeting of the minds, a uh, group photo. So uh, if you haven't nodded off by five o'clock, uh, you're welcome to come back and join us. If you look at your grid, there's a special uh, meeting ID set up just to take the picture and we won't belabor it. Uh, some of us might even have a drink in hand uh, on the East Coast, but uh, please consider joining us for that. That'll be a little bit of history. Uh, I will, by then it'll be jammies time. Yeah, we'll speak for yourself. You're probably wearing jammies now. What are you talking about? No, no. <laughs> um, do you want to say something about your CFRE uh, exploit? Yeah, uh, you know, it, it, part of part of our ongoing um, efforts uh, for meeting in the minds. I, I don't know, Bob. Five years now we've done this. Um, thanks to the the efforts of all of our stellar speakers uh, in getting together the information we need to uh, shoot off our program to CFRE a month in advance, uh, they uh, then take a look at our program, uh, essentially say, by golly, this looks pretty good, and uh, allow us to award points. Uh, and so we, we do, for those of you that have uh, interest in earning CFRE credits, we have a points tracker uh, you simply are uh, honor bound to keep track of what sessions you have attended. You get to earn a point for those. And uh, there you go. You're on your way to, to putting a badge on that says I'm a CFRE. And that form is available on the Meeting of the Minds website. And do, do we know for sure that uh, AFP allows uh, online conferences? We probably we don't, don't tell them that we got together I'm not virtually. telling them anything. <laughs> Um, but yeah, happy to do it. There's always um, uh, some people uh, attending and maybe even more now that it's more of an online crowd who uh, are on the hunt for CFRE credits. So and and so the answer is I, I do know for a fact because I've participated in several online presentations that did award CFRE. So I think we're in good shape, Bob. They could cut us some slack anyway, don't you? Think? I, I think they're cutting everybody some slack. Bob. Yeah. Um, that was nice of Dan to show up, wasn't it? Although. It was I'm a little disappointed he couldn't come meet me here in the auditorium. Well, I understand. Uh, yeah, go, I, yeah, I made the yeah. I made the bigger I'm effort, right? Um, but a nice. I mean, we could even have done the social distancing. He could have stood back there on the stage, and I could yeah. have just stayed here. But it's the thought that counts, right? It's good. Of That's him exactly to, right. Good of him to be here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see. Boy, um, I can't thank our uh, sponsors enough um, for uh, sticking with this idea um, for being very supportive of all the curveballs we've gotten thrown um, in this situation. Uh, as you all know, we, we usually pass out bingo cards and things to encourage you to say hi to everybody. Obviously, uh, uh, proximity is a big problem uh, this year. Uh, you'll see uh, many of them in the welcome video that we put together. A lot of them have sessions during the conference. We've even added a couple of demo sessions uh, for some of them. Anything that really helps them uh, get uh, connected with you all. If there was ever a year to be uh, indulging in, uh, in reaching out to some of these folks, this would be the year. And um, I say this every uh, year that, um, you know, I think uh, most uh, of the um, service folks that I run into at conferences who conduct sessions get the joke that, 
if you're just going to treat this too much like a sales uh, talk, people reserve the right to tune you out. I think all of these uh, companies benefit from seeing a lot of customers at a lot of different institutions. Uh, we're all the pollinating bees for what goes on in advancement in a lot of ways. And with all that knowledge comes a really good understanding of who's doing things really well. And so uh, don't be shy with these folks and understand that they're uh, they're trying to make things work in this odd time themselves. So catch their sessions, reach out to them. Uh, if you ever were thinking about getting a demo from some of these folks, this would be a pretty good time to do it while you're sitting at home uh, in Zoom meetings anyway, right? Um, so John, I, you know, we're, we're awfully, uh, we no, benefit we're indebted, a lot. We're, we're, in, we're indebted to them and they're, I, they're, they're in the handout, I think, that you sent uh, to everybody this morning, right, in the program. Um, I can't emphasize enough how important it is that we thank them uh, through, our, through our words as well as our deeds. So if you have an opportunity to, to engage with any of our sponsors in a uh, work environment or setting beyond the conference, uh, we'd appreciate it and they'd appreciate it. They'd sure appreciate it. And it's to, to their credit that they're, I mean, it was, they became very intrigued, uh, all of them, with the approach that we took here. And I think they feel good uh, about this experience. But uh, give them a hug if you have a chance. And Brian Gower just texted me and pointed out that AFP's conference now has an online component. So how can they get away without uh, with their online credits and deny us uh, well-intentioned folks. They can't. <laughs> um, John and I don't point out enough that there is a Meeting of the Minds Facebook page. Look at that happy bunch there of people. Is. Um, and uh, if you haven't already liked that page, uh, any content you want to share over the next couple of days, uh, you know, screen cap photos of John are hard to come by. Here's your big <laughs> chance uh, to, to be a... a, a sharing, tweeting, and tooting him all over uh, the, the internet. So um, uh, we don't talk about that enough. Anything you want to post on LinkedIn about how this is going, uh, good or bad, uh, um, please uh, feel free to do it. We'd love it. Um, we think uh, this is a nice opportunity to acquaint the rest of the country about what, what fun we've been having in Southern California. Um, there's the schedule. That's just a reminder to check the program that's inside of it for all of the um, Zoom meeting IDs and who, who the speaking times and who the hosts are. And after a little bit of uh, uh, tripping over uh, our feet uh, this morning, I think we finally got that all right. But make sure you've got the latest and greatest and most up to date. Yeah. The, um, if, you, if you again, if you did not get Bob's email this morning about. 7 a.m. Pacific time, I think it was. Um, double check and look for it, but go to the website uh, and download the latest program because about, I think Bob, you told me about, about two thirds of the meeting IDs uh, needed to be updated. Uh, the one thing that didn't change is the password. Uh, so MOTM2020 for all of the sessions that you uh, want to participate in. Um, here's that menu. It's pretty self-explanatory. Notice that the, the list of sponsors has now become the online exhibit hall. Um, the conference program is the latest up-to-date one that John just referenced. Um, any handouts that we receive from speakers, which we've already gotten some, and uh, we'll get those online, uh, some kind of trickle in after the fact. If you go into that conference sessions tab, where you've got the name of the session and then the description that's about a paragraph or so, um, that title is where we will link to the handouts as we get them. Um, I know I'm often as guilty as anybody of wanting to fuss with my slides up until the moment my session starts, but as soon as we have them, we'll pass them on. Well, you're, uh, and of course, your your screenshot here has already been changed. I'm looking at the live version, so. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We'll, we'll, we'll rehearse next time, but yeah, it's missing the, um, the archive of video. The video archive, it? that's right. Yeah. All right, why should we start uh, rehearsing now? Uh, here's the... <laughs> Here's the very patient committee uh, at least last uh, last week got together. <laughs> um, and uh, my sincere thanks to all of these folks for being uh, such good sports and being a good sounding board and and uh, in some cases having shown up every single year uh, we've done this. Um, and so uh, onward we go, right? Uh, but thanks right. to all you folks. We couldn't do this uh, without you. Um, 
so thanks very much again. Uh, there's the, the video reference that John just made and the, uh, the tab on the home page, which is the video archive page. There's already three there, by the way, uh, from our friends at UC Davis. There's the, the bingo card that we talked about. Um, maybe we've set a record this year. Maybe not. Who knows? Um, you know, among us friends, I'll tell you that we set this uh, conference up as an on-location conference. And by the time you migrate to an online conference, uh, you know, you're not really thinking about one, uh, one user per login and stuff like that. So frankly, you can share the login instructions with uh, anybody else you know, you'd like to, and, and we wouldn't know, and we, 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 yeah, don't, we don't mind. Just, don't, don't tell us. Yeah, don't tell us. Our, our, don't forget, our, Bob, I have an ethics panel tomorrow afternoon. So Yeah, this would be a good case history, wouldn't it? No, so, wouldn't. Um, <laughs> no, you know, we, we have um, rooms on Zoom that I think have plenty of capacity, and, uh, and so um, it's okay with us. We're all trying it to is. figure all this stuff out together, right? And so maybe uh, maybe we've set a record this year. Maybe we've crushed the record this year. Uh, who knows? We'll, we'll go back to terrestrial counting of people uh, next year. Um, we want to walk through uh, some sessions, just like we do every year, that really uh, catch our eye. I mean, we're grateful for all of our speakers. You really ought to catch every session now that they're all archived. There, yeah, don't no don't miss one. That's yeah. right. The biggest complaint we get every year is people that say, I can only attend 18% uh, of your sessions because you make me pick one in the breakouts. Well, now you've got no excuse. And in fact, every speaker in this uh, rostrum deserves uh, to be seen and heard uh, for the quality and the value they bring That's exactly uh, to this right. conference. Bob, um, calm down. Calm down, Bob. I'm sorry, calm John. Calm down. Am I crashing the uh, built-in uh, speakers and devices all over the country? Um, here's one I'll lead with, and John and I are just going to go a little back and forth uh, here. There's a session tomorrow afternoon. Boy, we had this set up perfect. Um, Nisha Crossman, who is joining us and is at UC Riverside, uh, happens to be the president uh, of the local Inland Empire AFP chapter. And um, it seemed like a really lovely uh, moment to uh, do some outreach with other not-for-profits uh, in the area. And so I pulled together this terrific panel uh, of folks specifically from other not-for-profit organizations. So the LA Zoo, the Chalk Children's Hospital, the LA Philharmonic, um, and uh, City of Hope, our old friends uh, from there. Uh, and this is all going to happen. It was at 1.15 tomorrow because we were going to take them all to lunch in the dining room at the Kellogg Center and then sit down and have a lovely chat with them. Well, now we're still having the lovely chat, but they get no lunch from us, which I feel bad about. But if you want to sit down and hear not just how other charities are uh, dealing with uh, the virus uh, epidemic, but also where they've been having success, um, in, on your regularly scheduled program in annual giving and advancement services with the way they do things in their neck of the woods. So um, that's tomorrow afternoon, and I'm quite proud of it. And I think that could easily be a mainstay going forward, uh, bringing in four different not-for-profit folks every year and hearing what they're up to that we could be learning from. Uh, I mentioned uh, the UC Davis uh, sessions. Um, all three of the ones already recorded are at UC Davis. I don't know what kind of control obsession uh, is going on there, but they really okay. do good work with their sessions. That's John, right. can you explain uh, the UC Davis uh, this, uh, phenomenon? Uh, so UC Davis has been incredible uh, participants in our conference for, for many years. Um, I, I think last year, earlier, no, I guess it was last year, they wanted to have 30 presenters, but we, we cut it down a little bit. But, but seriously, uh, great program. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work with darn near every one of their, their speakers. And we were thrilled uh, when they wanted to belly up to the bar, if you will, and uh, do the first ever pre-recording. And all of them did. So all three of the sessions um, that originally were going to be in person are now pre-recorded. So uh, tonight when you have insomnia and uh, are interested in watching a show, uh, you can go and take a look at any one of, of these um, uh, presented by these three individuals. So I just want to thank all, all three of them for their hard work. And uh, we, I've previewed the sessions and by golly, they're, I, 
in the future, I may want to pre-record mine so I can look as good as these ones. <laughs> so this is this is John Taylor pre-verified quality content. There, that's exactly they, they not only <laughs> CFRE credits, but they get my five stars. Um, and there's a lot of good advancement things going on at UC Davis. Sean Keister's got a, a groovy thing going on uh, up there, and uh, thanks to that whole team for being uh, involved with the meeting of the minds. But those are already. Uh, in the vault on the website. So right. uh, if if, uh, if one of John's sessions is sort of uh, lagging. Uh, as it usually uh, is. Yeah, yeah uh, feel free to jump in and catch uh, one of these as an alternative. <clears throat> First time ever we've been able to, to offer that. Um, right after we're done here, about a half an hour, 45 minutes from now, um, these are the first electives that we have coming up. Um, notice the uh, Zoom ID number at the bottom there. We've had to change the number. We had to make one more change uh, for John Van Oss and Amy McCoy, uh, the turn off the TV session. So if you want to join that, and I recommend it, uh, just be sure you use that Zoom ID number instead of the one that's in the chart. And yeah, and that's just, that's just for that session. You don't want to use it for all four sessions or else everybody will be turning off the TV. It could be a happy mistake if they well, wind, could be. wind up in a different session. And that's right. Um, then I can go get some lunch. Um, Terry Carlos is a grand dame of the Meeting of the Minds uh, and is the chair next year of the K-7 District Conference, by the way. Uh, so she's going to do a, a nice session on fundraising for all the particular corners of a university, student life and scholarships and, um, you know, things that don't always easily fit into a square hole uh, in um, the fundraising protocols that we have at our shop. Uh, Marissa is working with the team at Cal Poly Pomona doing sort of team building exercises. If you're into uh, some management uh, tips and some team building ideas, uh, she's got a very good reference of being um, uh, appreciated by the folks at Cal Poly Pomona. This is her first time at Meeting of the Minds and I'm glad that she is joining us. That's what that session's about. And then whatever John's Advancement Services thing is there, um, I'm totally fine. No, nobody cares about donor advised <laughs> funds and payments on pledges. And... Yeah. Okay, then after that, we've got one more uh, set of breakout sessions. Again, if you're in the in a management sort of track or even a career uh, track, Ken Stanley uh, was going to come see us all the way from uh, uh, Mankato, uh, Minnesota. He's already coming all the way to see us from Minnesota. I understand that, but I think we probably deprived him of a really nice excuse to get to Southern California. He, he um, wanted some warmth, I think. He came last year and we got to know each other and, um, and he offered uh, to help uh, with sort of career sessions and management sessions. Um, he's, he, he's a big coaching background uh, guy and uh, great fun. And so if, if that um, is something you're interested in, you'll be in good hands uh, with him. Brian is a perpetual star at this conference uh, from RNL and uh, their research guru. Um, he is hosting the Case Student Advancement Conference uh, this year. And so he's got all that uh, stuff on his mind, examples from other places. And um, he's a great speaker anyway, but if you're interested in the student, uh, the student philanthropy piece, um, as well as any volunteers, uh, that would be a nice choice. Um, and then uh, Rachel uh, from Get Through and Ryan, who's uh, an old pal uh, at UC Berkeley are going to talk about peer-to-peer -peer texting uh, as a strategy. And as we talk about other uses for your phonathon callers or uses for your reunion volunteers or as a follow-up at year end with your leadership annual giving prospects, I'm seeing a lot of places get critical mass with using uh, texting as uh, a solution. So I think that's a very uh, lovely session too um, to end the day with. Um, okay, and then remember, after these sessions is when our big group photo is going to be for anybody, if John hasn't nodded off, and for everybody else who's still standing, uh, join us for that. Okay, then bright and early tomorrow morning, John. Bye. Uh, um, I'll be up. Now, John, you should really explain. A, a session called Overcoming the Trough of Despair really and, and pre predates it, all it, the recent it, news. It does, and uh, it's amazing that Joe uh, had this notion, but uh, uh, Caltech and Joe, actually, we have a couple of sessions. Uh, Mark uh, Longo as well. I guess we'll see him in a second. But, yeah, Overcoming the Trough of Despair, but this particular trough is the one that I think many 
of us are finding ourselves in, and that is the uh, new system implementation trough. Uh, sometimes many of us will uh, do the implementation and find us in the trough and never able to get out. Uh, so we'll we'll, we'll get some words of wisdom on that particular trough, and it's not a a virus. Although if you implement a system incorrectly. I'm looking forward to that session. Right and early tomorrow morning, nine Pacific time. I guess I can sleep in though. You're really enjoying the trough metaphor, aren't you? I do. I love. I've it. never heard anybody say this particular trough so many times. Ever, this trough, or or even once. Um, uh, the rest of uh, the content first thing, um, best of the bunch is really just a grab bag of annual giving ideas. I have collected in my wandering since last we met uh, a year ago. Um, again, that'll be tempered a little bit with current news, but if you're just looking for a grab bag of stuff, that's what's going on there. Ray Watts is a dear old friend uh, of this uh, conference. He has moved from the University of Redlands over to Claremont McKenna, uh, but, uh, but we can't get rid of him at Meeting of the Minds, nor would we want to. And he uh, annually does a kind of a, an introductory session on uh, for those of you who now have prospects on your portfolio and are being nudged to get out of the office um, and just want some good block and tackling about how to begin thinking about personal cessation, that's what that session's all about. Um, Rachel Spencer is dialing in tomorrow, believe it or not, from London. Uh, she's with Vanilla Soft, who's a first time uh, sponsor. They also have an online phone a thon platform. Um, that they're having a lot of uh, success with these days in the UK and, uh, and, and in the US as well. Um, she's delightful. I'm thrilled that she's uh, joining us. She's bummed because she was going to be coming to Southern California for the first time and she's grounded uh, back in London, uh, but that's what uh, her session is all about. Um, and so that kicks the day off uh, at 9 a.m. Get your coffee. If you're Rachel, get your tea and uh, we'll be off and running uh, for that. Um, Here's the 10.30 uh, set of sessions. Right. Um, Dana is sitting in Colorado, but does work for uh, the University of California at San Francisco. Is kind of their direct mail uh, guru and is, um, is speaking on a topic that we don't get addressed enough at this conference, which is how do you really do testing with direct mail and how do you let data drive results? I'm excited about that. I mentioned we have uh, Nisha involved. Uh, Lisa Wright, who's the head of United Way, uh, in the Inland Valleys. Uh, they're going to team up and do a leadership annual giving forum. So where Ray is uh, kind of um, a, kind of a PowerPoint and a good training, uh, Nisha and Lisa are going to sort of hold a therapy session uh, for any other questions that you all have about getting out uh, with prospects. How do you sort of address that leadership annual giving level of the pyramid? Um, how do you identify those people? How do you get visits with those people? What materials do you use with those folks? Um, that's where they're coming from, and that'll be good. It'd be interesting to get Lisa's perspective on all that, uh, too. Um, and then our old friend, Lo de Jambry, uh, my favorite Frenchman uh, from Berkeley, uh, who's been a regular at Meeting of the Minds and a crowd favorite at Meeting of the Minds. Um, he's getting a bit sentimental, John, and a bit nostalgic in his semi-old age. And well, apparently... Yeah, I'd say you semi, he's still much younger than, than, than me. We are, yes. Um, <laughs> but he apparently has... A, I, what I don't understand is how in the world did you get him to keep this to only 75 minutes? <laughs> well, it's a, there's a compliment in there somewhere, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but but he, um, um, that sort of cuts both ways. He, he can't possibly be old enough to have that many profound things to say. And yet, uh, as you said, he certainly must uh, would, would certainly seem to have plenty. So um, anyway, if you're familiar with Lowe, you know how good he is. Uh, in front of a room uh, on a range of topics that he always speaks upon every year. This sounds like a little bit of uh, the best of the best uh, from a sampler of, of a lot of that stuff. And uh, so that will be a great fun session for all the fans of Low uh, that come every year. Um, we'll take a bit of a lunch break and then we've got uh, these sessions teed up. There's that other not-for-profit one that I talked about with my four friends from uh, the zoo and the Philharmonic and uh, City of Hope and uh, Chalk Children's. That'll be a fun chat. 
Uh, Christina Nichols uh, is here from MCR. Uh, MCR, if you don't know, is one of the big players in university uh, direct mail uh, these days and has been for a long time and has been a big supporter meeting of the mind. So she does a fun, engaging session. Uh, that would be a really nice choice. There's our friend Kent Stanley again from Minnesota with another one of his career-minded uh, sessions. So that's a nice trio at 115. Uh, 245, you want to say anything about Mark? You better now. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that again, that's uh, another one of our friends um, at at Caltech. Um, we we are uh, thrilled to have some uh, input from him for uh, the advancement services world on how we can uh, influence and impact change. I think one one of the things that that some of us in advancement services feel and maybe uh, hopefully wrongly, is that we were not listened to. Uh, so uh, here I think this is going to help us uh, be, be recognized for the professionalism that we can bring to the table. Uh, working my way up on this chart, uh, we've got a, a dynamic duo from UC Riverside, uh, Erica and Natasha. Um, who are going to talk to the important subject of the relationship between annual giving and prospect research, uh, especially because of a lot of other topics we've already touched on, the leadership annual giving piece, the personal solicitation piece, um, you know, even really the broader things in annual giving, direct mail and phone -thon prospects. Um, you know, I suspect there's some affinity scoring in that session. I bet there's some prospect rating in that session. Uh, what sort of tools and, and tips uh, do you have at your... Um, uh, disposal. How do we see who the taller trees are uh, in the annual giving world and how do we sort of stratify our approaches with different folks? Um, there's Lowe again, uh, diving into one of his favorite topics, which is data mining. I first met Lowe uh, because uh, he's really one of the great uh, data mining gurus and uh, he likes to exercise his muscles every year with his crowd that loves the data mining uh, conversation. So if you are one of those deep divers, uh, that's a good session for you. And at the top of that list is my old friend, Taylor Staten, who I first met when she was at the University of Miami years ago, back when crowdfunding was brand new. Uh, she decided to come west like a lot of us uh, East Coasters do, um, has set up shop, uh, the crowdfunding shop at UCLA, uh, and is going to give us, I can't believe five years have gone by already with this, but she's going to give us um, sort of her uh, um, reflections on what they've learned at UCLA uh, in the first five years of their crowdfunding program. So for my digital friends uh, listening in, I, that's going to be must-see TV, literally, uh, with Taylor, and I'm really happy that she's back to join us again uh, this year. Okay, at four o'clock, uh, continuing the digital theme, um, boy, and this is a title that really took on extra significance, you know, since the coronavirus has showed up. I, um, uh, what I'm gonna do is just provide a rundown of what digital engagement officer means at different places. At some places, it's your phone-a-thon callers. At some places, it's your leadership gift officers. Um, there's certainly major gift fundraisers who are more or less digital fundraisers at the moment themselves. Um, I'm just gonna sort of do a general walk on what we're talking about, what sort of tools are available uh, in a digital realm, um, how some specific institutions have implemented uh, that kind of functionality. Um, so I'm, this won't be one shop's story. This will be sort of a hodgepodge of what we're calling digital engagement officers. Um, John, the uh, ethics panel, yeah, actually, the ethics panel has one additional uh, participant, our friend Anita Lawson uh, at the LA Philharmonic Association. Uh, so right. the, five, the five of us um, will be talking about all things ethics. Um, and, and we've come <laughs> up with a, a laundry list of topics uh, that uh, seem to keep on cropping up or popping up. Uh, but we also are, are very, very interested in addressing or speaking to uh, ethical challenges that you may be facing. Uh, and so I welcome, uh, if you want to send me, John Taylor Consulting at gmail.com, specific um, uh, ethical challenges that we can use anonymously. Uh, I will not tell anybody where the question came from. Uh, I'm asking for a friend. 
Yeah, that's right. I'd love to uh, swap out your uh, your conundrums with some of the ones that we've come up with. Being a Cal Poly Pomona is our is our resident uh, major gift uh, fundraiser. She's the executive director of Central Development at Cal Poly Pomona, and then Nathan, uh, who we have not spoken about, he's with the, he's the president of the Futurist Group, uh, one of our sponsors, right? Uh, Absolutely. And and uh, and then there's Natalie at Cal Poly Pomona, and uh, Anita Lawson and myself. So we we've got the these list of topics that we would we plan on covering. Um, but I I'd love to get your input as well. We'll, we'll take Q and A during the session. But if you are disinclined to let people know what ethical conundrum you're facing and want to write me offline, please do. Yeah, and John, that's a good reminder. Any session that we've put together that's a panel or a forum uh, or is, is a little more of a group discussion rather than somebody making a presentation, um, we welcome any questions you want to shoot our way, especially in advance, so we have time to think about it and respond to them. I think when we decided to carry this whole thing online, the one uh, uncomfortable part of the conversation was what do you do with panels and what do you do with um, forums in, in terms of getting feedback from folks and getting questions from folks. And I think we've solved it pretty well, but we're not trying to shut the audience out of the conversation no. at all. So if, if that's you sending things you wanna hear about in advance, feel free to, to um, send them our way. Um, but yeah, that sounds like a fun session. You sound surprised that these issues keep coming back. Human nature well, I, I being what it is, you know? It, 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 I'm, I'm actually going to use uh, one one topic that came up uh, just this week, which is a topic that came up last year, which is a topic that came up three years ago. I will not tell you what it is, but it is um, interesting that some of the same issues keep coming up, and uh, we'll we'll try to provide some advice and guidance. Sounds good. You know, I don't know why I put out all these water bottles. It seems kind of silly in hindsight, but uh, well, you might be thirsty. The other, um, the other session, which really kind of bumps up against the digital engagement officer, and, and I get that if your loyalties are split uh, at that time. Um, JD Beebe is an old friend and an, a, a good supporter of this conference. If you don't know his story, he and his wife got married. Well, he and his fiance got married, um, and. Uh, they're hand signing thank you letters for all of their wedding presents. And so the story goes, it occurred to them, why don't we just send videos to everybody thanking them for their gifts? And there was born a business that only seems to get bigger every time I check in uh, on it. Um, and uh, I'm frankly impressed that he's got time in his day these days to indulge us with a session uh, at Meeting of the Minds. So if you've if you've not gotten exposed to thank you, and I don't know how you haven't, and you want to hear about integrating video into advancement in the way we're talking about digital engagement officers uh, and phonathon callers sending videos to people who make a pledge, um, he'll give you a very nice uh, overview. And um, you know, I always wonder: uh, is somebody else going to try and copy that product, or is Blackboard going to swallow them up, or? or whatever, um, for the moment, he um, really seems to have thought through, you know, how to operationalize video in what we do in advancement and personal video. Uh, so if you haven't caught that act, I recommend it. He's a, a, a good guy and a good storyteller and, uh, and it's a good product too. Okay, uh, the home stretch on Friday morning. Uh, our friends from uh, Give Campus, Dan Ettinger, is going to talk, um, and we'll talk about a lot of uh, case histories with the customers they work with, with their giving platform, uh, crowdfunding, giving days, uh, teams, all that stuff. Um, so he's always a good chat, and I really appreciate what they do at Give Campus. Um, Carrie Steer is coming for the first time to the Meeting of the Minds uh, from Claremont McKenna. She's got a terrific pedigree. Uh, having worked at Colorado College and now Claremont McKenna, um, is a perfect person to have in a discussion about alumni participation strategies. Obviously, that's going to be tempered a bit with recent headlines. Um, we're also going to add some folks to that chat. I'm going to be chiming in. Uh, we've got Catherine Marhenke, uh, who's going to uh, join us all the way from the East Coast at Colgate University and is a bit of a digital diva herself. Um, 
and we're going to round that out, I think, probably between now and Friday with a few other faces too. But um, uh, that could easily be sort of a group therapy session trying to focus on participation with who knows what ahead of us. But um, between uh, the pity party and, uh, and the therapy, I, I bet you'll hear some good ideas of um, what you can do during this period of time and beyond uh, too. Um, and then uh, the third session there, again, for my phonathon crowd, which we always have a good happy bunch every year, um, that's sort of the deep dive uh, group conversation. Uh, I'm teaming Rachel, who's going to join us again from London, uh, with uh, Kamali, who's right down the street at Pitzer College uh, from Pomona. Um, so you couldn't have somebody closer and you can have somebody farther uh, joining forces right. for that conversation. Um, uh, I know them both well. Kamali has done a great job for a couple of years uh, for us. And so that'll be fun uh, if you are so inclined to hear the, the phonathon chatter. And notice the title there. Um, there was a little sensitivity not to just talk about the phonathon, but how do you uh, involve your callers in other activities like texting and like video, um, uh, handwritten thank you notes, right? Uh, fulfillment. So uh, they were very mindful that this isn't just a phonathon forum this year. It's a student engagement team edition. Uh, and so um, think outside the box for your phonathon and, and join them for that session. Okay, um, John, we've actually sort of outstayed our welcome almost uh, for this session, but let's run through. Let's run through these last couple. Why don't you take Nadine and Nathan, and then I'll talk about the other two. <clears throat> so uh, we're we're a couple. First of all, I don't think we can escape uh, any any session, uh, any any conference these days that doesn't touch on artificial intelligence, and uh, I'm thrilled that Nathan. Uh, is going to be able to join us and share his insights uh, on, on that particular topic. I, I am constantly astounded uh, by how much uh, uh, many institutions, how much effort many institutions are putting into artificial intelligence compared to when I when I was doing it myself, and it was not even called artificial intelligence; it was called more like data analytics. Uh, it's it's a very different world now. So I'm I'm very much uh, looking forward to uh, hearing from from him. And then Nadine uh, from uh, Pomona is going to share with us about unifying. It's all about data and business intelligence again here. I think these are both great sessions to complete our conference, at least on the advancement services side, um, because these are cutting edge issues and topics that. Are, are, are becoming much more at the forefront of all the things that we are doing. Most of the organizations I'm working with now, when they're talking about adding staff, they're adding staff in these areas before they're adding staff, uh, much to the chagrin of some fundraisers, but adding staff in these areas before adding fundraising staff so that we can provide ammunition to them for going forward and launching their efforts. So I can't wait for these two sessions. I'm glad and then, that we're taping them both because I can't be in two places at one time. Yeah, yeah. Um, the two folks on my side of the ledger, Tessa Burke has been a supporter for several years uh, in her team at iModules. My fellow Chicagoan, uh, who's also probably a little bummed she's not in SoCal uh, this week. Um, so that's, uh, she always has a nice contribution to make. And uh, my old pal, Ryan Lawrence, uh, who I met on the East Coast, I think he was at Delaware, and then he came West too, don't they all? And now he's frolicking in the Bay Area. Um, he could easily talk about any number of things digital uh, related. And so he is going to talk about any number of things digital related. That's kind of a potpourri uh, catch-all Q&A uh, of anything that you want to um, pick his brain about or anybody else who's listening in about digital fundraising. And I'm grateful for him, uh, to him for being a part of our fun. Uh, we've got our closing session. We're going to give everybody else over the next two days a chance to give their perspective on coronavirus fundraising. And then we're going to chime in with the best of what we heard and, and anything else that hasn't been said uh, on that subject. Uh, so Brian uh, from RNL and Scott Fry from Community Funded will both join us for, for that. And then we even squeezed in one more bonus encore session. Uh, if you still want a, a little more insight on texting, uh, Rachel Cleary is a great 
friend and we've added a session uh, just so you can get uh, her demo if you're interested in hearing specifically about how uh, the functionality that works uh, with get through. Um, John, I'm going to try and keep the video one more time, I think. Let me see if I can do this. Um, so let's see, new share. Yeah, they're not giving me that option to load a video, which is probably smart on their, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm not going to try and make this crash. And anyway, well, so um, put it on the website. <laughs> yeah, so John and I uh, put together a really great video. Um, just almost on a whim on Monday, I sent out uh, an appeal to the sponsors and the speakers saying, would you film a quick selfie video uh, welcoming everybody to the meeting of the minds? And they all contributed. It turned out great. And um, I will circulate the link. Uh, that's going to be your proper welcome uh, to this conference, much better than John and I can do. Um, and so be sure you find that, because uh, it really, in a way, is a work of art in terms of uh, um, really making you feel like we're one big group. And we couldn't have done this without all of them. Um, you know, we may still stub our toe as we go here. I, I'm, I'm relying on our speakers knowing how to use this equipment, our hosts knowing how to use this equipment, the technology holding up for all of it. Uh, so please be patient with us. Um, but the one thing that we couldn't do any other year was put all these sessions in an archive. Uh, and you don't have to gnash your teeth running from one to another. And if anything happens to crash over the next couple of days, uh, we will try and get it rescheduled and get it up in the archive uh, sooner or later. So that's one nice takeaway that maybe we can offer uh, going forward. Um, but for now, thank, uh, thanks very much for being thank here. You. This, thank you. this isn't our plan A, but uh, it might be uh, something that's, uh, that's good muscles to exercise for the future. John, anything else? No, I'm, I'm just thrilled to be part of this. Thanks to you, Bob, for, for your orchestration and for you, several hundred people participating in the conference. Uh, it's going to be a good one. And uh, look forward to the group photo at uh, 5.05. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being here. Hope you get some value out of this. Hang in there with what's going on at your shop. Uh, but uh, have a laugh and uh, have a hug uh, with your friends uh, virtually and enjoy the next couple of days, okay? Bye -bye. Thanks very much.